Okay. A mutual induction machine. Tesla, Nikola Tesla makes allusions to your free energy device in a couple places. And there's so many videos out there and articles about Nikola Tesla. It's either crackpot stuff or stuff that everybody's already heard. So I like to make original videos regarding what Nikola Tesla himself said. You know, stuff that's new. It's like, wow, I didn't know that about Tesla. That's actually quite fascinating. And it's about uh, rotating magnetic fields, and it's not directly relevant to Nikola Tesla's AC generator, and I have proof of that. But he also talks about a free energy device, and he also gives a children's uh, story parable, and it's a really old story, and I had to look it up. And it's called uh, The Heavenly Twins, with the, uh, the twin children, uh, Budge and Toddy. Um, and, and that's kind of obscure. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, let's get on to Nikola Tesla's... Um, of course, he had countless inventions, of course, as we all know, many, many, many numerous patents. And uh, everybody thinks that his greatest invention was the AC generator, and he states specifically that that's not the case. And then I'll talk about uh, his mutual induction, because there's a lag. It's called uh, mutual induction, but there's an, a lag in mutual induction. And what Nikola Tesla is actually getting into in talking about a free energy device is you can take advantage of the temporal lag... Okay, it's also called EMR, what well, we call it now, EMR, electromagnetic retardation. You can take advantage of the lag and have mutual induction in an actual uh, perpetual energy device where ether perturbation occurs and energy is generated through a specific uh, field geometry. And uh, he's talking about microhelices uh, passing through flat plates. But let's get on to uh, rotating magnetic fields. And this is a 1928 interview. So towards the interview, the end of the interview, we asked Tesla which uh, area of science most appealed to them. While we didn't, ex well, we expected him to mention radios and airplanes. The world system was not his induction motor. Instead, it was the discovery of the principle that preceded the induction motor, the rotating magnetic field. And this, of course, is a in reference to the Lamore frequency or uh, or geromagnetic precession, which, of course, as I've told you in countless videos since I wrote the book on magnetism, is that magnetism is a three-dimensional force vector, literally a three-dimensional S-curve. And, uh, and, of course, magnetism is the dielectric fields, the manifestational loss of inertia. You, you set up a... Uh, there's no such thing as a two-dimensional force vector. A magnet doesn't have two poles that go out directly like this. Two-dimensionality is three-dimensional. It's the three-dimensional force vector. Tesla answered, Rotating magnetic fields were dearest to my heart. When I made the discovery of the rotating magnetic fields, I was a very young man. The revelation came after years of concentrated thought and it was my first great thrill. It was not only a valuable discovery, capable, extensible, practical applications, it was a revelation of new forces and new phenomena unknown to science before. No, Dr. Tesla said with some feelings, I would not give up my rotating magnetic field discovery for a thousand inventions, however valuable, designed merely as mechanical contraptions to deceive the eye and the ear. Then he said, a thousand years uh, forward, he says hence, that the telephone and the motion picture machine and the camera may be obsolete, but the principle of rotating magnetic fields will remain as vital living thing for all time to come, forever and ever. Um, this is an this article called A Famous uh, Prophet of Science Looks into the Future, Popular Science Monthly in 1928. And uh, this other interview is from 1929, uh, New York World, number 29. And to the editor of the world, this is Nikola Tesla. Like him, Edison, he's referring to Edison. My induction motor may be discarded and forgotten, his AC generator, in the continuous evolution of electrical motor arts, but my rotating magnetic field discovery with its marvelous phenomena and manifestations of force, meaning from magnetism, of course, because saying magnetism and force is the same thing. Force and magnetism are one and the same thing. Center field of divergence, i.e. A, uh, a force vector, i.e. force in motion, i.e. magnetism. Uh, manifestations of force from magnetism will last as long as science itself. In other words, for all time, forever and ever and ever. Let's get to the point, however. That's a, a prequel uh, to set up. And then we'll go on to uh, another reference of Tesla makes. And he alludes uh, to a free energy device from mutual induction. And he makes a reference to this uh, article, or a book, excuse me. He says, we remember that beautiful book, The Heavenly Twins, where Budge and Toddy, the children, always uh, insisted at all times of the day and night to see the wheels go round and round and have their father's watch opened up for them to look at. In other words, like an old mechanical watch, watching the wheels go round and round and round. 
And the medalist, meaning the winner, is what he's referring to. The winner tonight was a man who saw on his mind's wheel going round and around. He's talking about himself to a, 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 in a, a crowd of people. There was no means of getting alternating current motors to rotate, and he goes on and on, and he talks about free energy device prophetically in his mind's eye that the rotating magnetic fields would set the wheels going round and round all over all over the land, all over the world, forever and ever. Um, did you carry that recognized field medalist party? Forget that the medalist or the winner. When he says medalist, he means a winner. It's just old English talk. May the phenomena of high frequency known to all of its practicality for the first time that he showed a revelation to science and to, to art of all time. Let's uh, go on here, and he talks about uh, mutual uh, induction. This is, he's, uh, he's ruminating on this. He said, the variations of strengths and the intensity of the current transmitted through these circuits, and the armature, he's making reference to the AC generator, but he's actually talking about mutual induction further on. Traveling the coils of the motor produce a steady progressive shifting of the resultant attractive force exerted by the poles upon the armature and consequently let's get on to the important point so the capacity in terms of the relative all uh, attractive force is a question uh, simply a diagram of force and it's immaterial for the operation whether the fields are close together or far apart and whether or not they are directly connected and uh, getting to the important section so the two sets are uh, connected inductively through the armature. The windings part of the set, so part of the period against. So the beginning of the generator, the first motor of the action beginning at the same time, such that the generated currents are always passed in a definite direction with respect to the field. They are commutated, as it were, as a tendency to rotate in a given direction is imparted to the armature. Now place these two fields side by side and connect properly the armature windings. Are not the fields, uh, again, inductively connected? Do not the currents set up uh, by uh, one field cause the currents to circulate in the other? And is this action not the same as in both cases? This is, of course, a fact. And he actually goes on to state that this is uh, the basis uh, for a, uh, an energy device. A free energy, he actually doesn't use the word free energy device. He talks about a new form of energy. He's referring to electromagnetic retardation or EMR where the induced field is alternated back and forth. And I don't mean like an alternating current like Tesla's AC generator. Um, and he actually got that idea. And of course, he makes allusion to that in the, uh, the, the book, uh, The Heavenly Twins or Budge and Toddy are... Uh, have within their minds, uh, you know, the perpetually turning wheels. He's actually talking about mutually induced uh, currents from the magnetic and the dielectric and taking advantage of that with specific field geometry such that they would induce each other in perpetuity and causing ether perturbation, i.e. a free energy device. And this is a field geometry. Actually, uh, several uh, skunk works, well, one specific skunk work person talks about a, a uh, a solid state single piece uh, device that actually generated uh, energy uh, for the entire machine and it was a specific field geometry. This is exactly what Nikola Tesla is talking about. There are, uh, Nikola Tesla doesn't make a direct uh, verbiage to free energy. What he's talking about is mutual alternating back and forth. Not of a motor, not his motor, or alternating current or armature brushes. He's actually talking about the induced current where uh, the induction occurs here and then the charge occurs here and then there's a lag and they alternate them back and then they're perpetually uh, kind of like a uh, you know like basically a perpetual motion machine a free energy device what Nikola Tesla is saying in this very long and lengthy thing and this is also from uh, Nick uh, Tesla said and another book that this is in in greater length it's called uh, inventions and sayings of Tesla is he's talking about uh, perpetual induction taking advantage of electromagnetic retardation. You can read about electromagnetic retardation. It's written about extensively in the works of Dr. Oleg D. Jefomenko. And it's, called, in the, it's in his book, which I have, is called Electromagnetic Induction and Causality. Causality and Electromagnetic Induction? Yeah, correct. Anyway, it's called EMR. That's literally what it's called, electromagnetic retar uh, retardation. Where the induced field is a lag between the actual current generated, and then you, you flip them, and so then the induced current lag creates a field, and then it is worked back and forth perpetually. And so with a proper field geometry, we would actually have uh, proper field geometry, we would actually have uh, a, a free energy device. I actually for years thought that a free energy device was completely impossible, but I always had an open mind and had uh, given it a great deal of thought. And 
I made the astounding obvious revelation. It's just so obvious. A lot of times we miss the obvious is that in all forms of energy generation, whether it be nuclear or, uh, or uh, uh, hydro or wind, there is no direct transference of energy. The, you know, the water doesn't get transformed to energy. What it does, it actually uh, churns up the ether. That's what uh, James, uh, Charles Prody Steinmetz would talk about, the large power generators are churning up the ether. What it does is it actually churns up the ether, but what if we could actually take advantage of, uh, of the lag of the mutually induced current between the dielectric and magnetic and apply a particular field geometry for power generation that does not actually have to have a perpetual input, whether that be nuclear, because nuclear is just heating up water, which is turning a turbine, which turns an AC generator. The same is true of hydraulic, the same is true of wind, but there is nothing that is converted, in, like in a nuclear power plant, the nuclear energy in those uranium rods, there's no energy at all that goes from that. It gets transformed. What you're actually doing is generating enormous amounts of heat, which causes the, the movement of uh, the excitation of the water. It turns into steam, and the steam turns a turbine. But there's no energy that is uh, transformed from the nuclear plant itself that actually turns the steam turbine, that turns the, turns the uh, turbine uh, that's... Uh, uh, being turned by the steam, it doesn't occur with wind and it doesn't occur with hydraulic either. Um, the only actual uh, energy uh, uh, transformation is uh, in solar panels, but even that is kind of a crude example. But anyway, Sinez, Nikola Tesla does talk about free energy. And, uh, you know, the important quote in the, in the earlier section of this is where Tesla says his famous invention is not his AC generator, which you would think when he was asked. He said, no, it's the principle of uh, rotating magnetic fields. It was understanding of the nature and uh, connection between the dielectric and magnetic and how this could be taken advantage of. He says this is the secret will, which will uh, unravel the future for all humanity. This is Nikola Tesla's own word, so... Take that as you will. But yes, Nikola Tesla does allude to free energy device, and he's not talking about his, uh, his uh, AC generator. He's talking about the free energy that will be generated, not from his a AC generator, which no AC generator generates free energy. It is an energy transformer. That's all any current energy uh, AC uh, generator, whether it's out at the Hoover Dam or any nuclear plant, those are energy transformers. But they are not, you know, you know, taking one form of energy and converting it to another. They're not energy converters, they're energy transformers. But Nikola Tesla is talking about the principle of the rotating magnetic field as being the principle for future tech generation of, uh, of energy, taking advantage of the rotating magnetic fields to create a, uh, an ether geometry device for power generation. Anyway, I uh, nailed the important points of that. Sorry, I, I read so quickly. You know, there's a lot of Nikola Tesla stuff here to read. I would bore you to death if I read all of it. Um, but yeah, Nikola Tesla's favorite uh, allegory to that is the uh, the heavenly twins about Budge and Toddy, who are uh, interested in the uh, in the uh, perpetually moving wheels, the wheels that go round and round for all time. That is what obsessed Nikola Tesla's mind more than anything, in his own words. So, no one else talks about that when it uh, comes to Nikola Tesla. But Nikola Tesla himself says that, so why am I the first person to uh, point that out? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. Let me know. And uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.